So the first of these is uh, additional attributes, which uh, are really custom fields. And, and they can be applied to the types of data cookbook objects that you see on the screen there. Administrators in the cookbook create them, uh, and then they're available to populate when a user is in edit mode. Once a field has a value, hence been populated, it will display when a user looks at the object in view mode. So let's go to the next slide to take a look at the uh, types of attributes you can create. The checkbox, the drop down, and the multi select, those are probably the easiest for users to interact with because it's basically sort of clicking and selecting. But um, we see all of these in use by uh, across the client base. Um, and a quick shout out for the multi select, which, is which was introduced earlier this fall or maybe late this summer, which allows you to choose multiple options and apply it to uh, an attribute. I've got a few slides here that feature some sample uses of additional attributes. I'm hard to sort of linger on each of these for a few seconds so you can scan them. Um, for definitions, for example, as you recall, every definition needs to have its own unique name, but we'll see clients create something like common name down here at the bottom of the slide, which would cover a situation where a number of definitions might have the same label or sort of uh, shorthand name on uh, on a report on uh, on specifications and collections on the next slide what we'll see frequently is that um, when data items are combined together all of a sudden there are concerns or at least uh, a desire to be aware that sharing the the item that's documented as a specification or a collection could run afoul of some privacy concerns, for example. So we'll see a lot of things like a simple checkbox to, uh, to signify that the PII is contained or even something more detailed. Uh, and then the Enterprise Edition allows you to document data systems in some detail. And so here's a quick look at some of the information that you might decide to highlight. Uh, all of the information that you see in additional attributes could probably be captured in one of the existing text fields, you know, for any of these objects. But these additional attributes allow certain aspects to be made more visible. So they can uh, be highly useful. All right, let's turn our attention now to data cookbook workflows. It's been a few years since we introduced the ability to configure these approval workflows. Some of our clients have really embraced this feature. Uh, others may not have seen the value or just didn't have the time to uh, dig into it in detail. So I thought today would be a good time to bring it to your attention once again. Why would you make changes to a standard workflow? Uh, I think the most common reason is to add another level of review, that is to make it a little bit more uh, intensive in terms of the number of people who are involved. But another almost equally common reason is to streamline it, just to make it move a little bit more quickly. Uh, and you can also make fairly minor or even cosmetic changes, such as altering the colors or renaming a label. Let's go to the next slide here. It is pretty common for an organization to need at least two different approval paths for an object. Uh, definitions, for example, can often proceed in a pretty simple, straightforward manner, but or manner that is, but some of them need to, you know, some kind of additional oversight. So uh, a good way to accomplish this is to apply a workflow condition to the entire workflow. Then when an object meets that condition, it will go through this particular workflow. And then objects not meeting those conditions would go through other workflows. And you can see, uh, depending on the object that you are working with, that you have a, a variety of different conditions available to you. Let's go to the next slide. I think this is gonna show us, yes, these are sort of three different workflows might be in play for your definitions. So on the top, we have one specific to uh, uh, definitions in the HR functional area. Uh, on the, the second one there, we might be more concerned with what happens to a definition when it gets a classification code. Note also that that has a, a technical review stage in it. And then our final uh, sort of our fallback would be the, uh, the standard workflow there, sort of in the lower right-hand corner. These, by the way, are screenshots of the 
the, the workflow sort of splash page when you're looking in the cookbook in case you haven't ever taken a look at that. Uh, in the next slide, we see how these workflows work together, right? So there's a hierarchy. The cookbook evaluates objects when they're created and at various points in their uh, life cycle. And so in this particular case, a, def a definition has one of the following classification codes, it gets captured first. If that's not true of it, then the cookbook next looks to see if the functional area is human resources. If that is also not the case, then we fall into the third uh, workflow here, the definition approval with technical review. Note also that these three are not necessarily the same as the three we saw on the previous page. These are just to serve as examples. Workflow conditions can also be applied inside a step, right? Or inside a, the conditions exist at the step level, but steps are part of a stage. And if you've worked with the workflows at all, you'll know that a stage must have at least one step in order to be functional. The idea for, for step conditions is that the general structure of the workflow remains the same, but uh, at some point in the workflow, in a particular stage, an object needs to be brought to the attention of one or another set of users and in ways that can't be easily accommodated using an assignment mapping, for example, or uh, you know, multiple user groups. So here's uh, an example for definition approval and also an example for specification approval. Let's go to the next slide to see what this looks like. You know, for our specification approval, we have a stage here where the spec specification needs to be assigned to one group, uh, or this could even be a named role. Uh, or another based on the type of specification. So you see in my first step, we have uh, a list of seven or eight specification types. And in the second step, we have a list of, of five or six more. So we've applied this condition to both of these steps so that depending on the specification type, one of these groups receives the uh, notification uh, or the other and then can, uh, can do the work. So, Let's go to the next slide, Brenda. This is kind of a quick rule of thumb for using workflow conditions. Obviously, your mileage is going to vary, but in general, conditions at the workflow level are used to separate out a set of cookbook objects. Um, and step conditions or conditions at the stage level are used to introduce flexibility within an otherwise standard kind of workflow structure. Obviously, you can mix and match uh, you can mix and match multiple conditions uh, at a workflow or at a step. And you can use step conditions inside a workflow that also has condition at the top level. 